Well, hello everyone and welcome to the fourth in our series of Ask the Expert interviews on the Thermoscientific Orbiter of Explorers 120 Mass Spectrometer. My name is Mike Chipermirski, I'm the Senior Product Marketing Manager for the Hybrid Instruments. And today we're speaking with Olaf Scheibner, who is the team leader for sales support in EMEA. Hello, Olaf, and thank you for joining us today to talk about the calibration and method editor on the instrument. Thank you much, Jay, for being here again. Yeah, so let's have a little look on these two quite quite important topic because it's really the matter of everyday use of the instrument. So when we start with the calibration, uh, we changed a couple of things compared to the existing QXRQ series. Um, our calibration mixture now finally is one calibration mixture that serves for both polarities. So you once infuse it, um, and then you can uh, run the positive calibration first and just immediately after without any hassle you can run the uh, negative calibration the same way. Um, but even more, um, we have added another item um, to the calibration routine, um, and that is um, that we really calibrate down to the lowest masses. Uh, as you may know, the instrument now scans down to M over Z40, um, and mass accuracy at, at these very small masses, of course, is a very critical point. And so with these new instruments, uh, we changed the calibration routine as, a, as an extra point of the calibration routine, we have the low mass calibration. And as you may see here in that screenshot, um, our lowest mass to calibrate is the mass M over Z 42. Uh, so really calibrate down uh, to the lowest mass is available. And with that, you have really the full mass accuracy uh, without any uh, questions about it anymore over the full mass range from M over Z40 up to M over Z3000, which is the maximum on the um, Explorers 120. The calibration routine runs fully automated, and it's pretty smart nowadays. Um, so it doesn't run all the very different items um, at the same time because the full calibration can take a while, um, but it will not run all the items every time. It depends on how, la how long the last calibration has been gone, if the instrument has been vented in between. And according to that, smart calibration will just activate the routines that are necessary in this place to keep the instrument up and running to its best performance. And normally you only need to run the, the mass calibration and the system calibration uh, will tell you when it comes up, but it's at maximum once a month, not, not more often. Uh, while the mass calibration will tell you also when it's uh, recommended to uh, rerun the calibration, but according to your experience, you even can influence that. You will be able uh, to set uh, a time um, period uh, for which the mass calibration will be good. And once the mass calibration is run, this will be at least 24 hours, uh, but you may encounter that your system even is stable for longer time, and then you may change that value that you're only reminded after two or three days. And just keep in mind when you use the easy IC internal calibration when you run the system, uh, you're good for at least five days of uh, constant operation of the system without rerunning the mass calibration. But it's not only the mass calibration that has become more easy. Um, it is the full uh, method editor that has changed. And as mentioned before in the series, um, as a user of one system, you become the user of all systems. It is the same. Uh, instrument control software in the background. It's the same design of the method editor uh, between the instruments, although they have certain different functions, of course, and HRM instrument is different from a triple quad. Uh, but still, the operation is very similar, and so you won't have any problems uh, coming from one of the three system types to switch over to the next. And the same way, it will be easy to transfer methods because um, it's the same, pro uh, same software. And so it will be easy once you have developed a certain uh, methodology, a certain application on one of these instruments um, to scale it to a different one, uh, whatever is needed as a backup, or if you just go from uh, research to routine, you will be able to change the method from one system to a different one uh, very easily um, without big hassle. Uh, in order to make things easy, um, on the one hand, we have the global parameters. So uh, in contrast to the QX Active uh, series uh, instruments, now this, the source parameters, for example, are part of the instrument method. So it's not a separate file anymore. It's all in one file, which you can exchange. And you see here, of course, source parameters. Uh, you can see here, you can control the syringe. You can control divert valves. There are up to two divert valves, uh, which you can control. And so all these parameters that you may know from the predecessor instruments already, are present here. 
And on the other hand, you have the scan parameter. So this is the very MS method, the mass spectrometry method. Uh, on the Explorers 120, you will be able to line up three different experiments. Uh, just as an example here, uh, one full scan, and then you have uh, coupled this with the DIA experiment, and on top of it, a targeted sim. Um, you can give these time windows, so you don't need to run this over the whole time. You can uh, limit the time windows and just run the sim um, at a certain time point. And what is new for these instruments that these different scan modes have their own inclusion lists. So uh, the inclusion list of the DIA, of course, is a different of targeted sim. And if you'd run the MS, for example, as data dependent, you could introduce different data dependent masses here in the full scan uh, in contrast to the targeted sim, so that you may have 600 pesticides for data full scan data dependent MS2 here. Uh, but only have three or four of these into targeted SIM to boost sensitivity on those who are a little bit critical to be detected in low uh, concentrations on the full scan. So there's a lot of uh, options you have on this instruments. You're completely free in designing these methods, and you got a lot of more freedom um, on these instruments compared to the predecessor instruments. Um, but in order to make life easy, it's not only that you can design these methods here, we also provide you uh, with a good set of methods that are already um, pre-designed according to application notes um, that we have uh, published methods that we have developed in our own application labs and that have become uh, useful uh, or that we have uh, published in different ways um, like the pesticide explorer where you find um, the list of the pesticide explorer here and the according method or the vetrax explorer where the method is integrated into the instrument control software and these templates, um, they will be updated on a regular base. If new application nodes come out, if we develop new application in our own labs uh, and we find them useful, we will make them available immediately to you. And you can update these online from your own system as long as you have uh, internet contact uh, with your acquisition system. Uh, you can update these whenever necessary and whenever you deem it uh, useful for you. And you will fi always find new methods available or updated methods if we extend the portfolio of compounds in these. Uh, once you set up that, such a method, um, you will also find at the end of the, of the game um, a nice summary. Um, so this is, this is uh, easy to understand and you see all the param parameters in one glimpse. Um, and these parameters, um, as you know it from, from our other systems maybe, are stored into the raw file. And with the Explorer series, uh, we have a new item here as well, that once you have a raw file and you know, oh, this was a good analysis and this application runs great, but where is the method? I don't know. Um, you just can take the raw file and import um, the method from this raw file into the method editor here. So this is a new functionality for the explorers to make your life easier. Once you find a good application, but the method is somewhere stored away, lost, whatever, and you will be able to retrieve that easily just by uh, click and copy and all parameters will be imported uh, into the method editor directly and you have all back as it has been run once successfully. With that, I thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Olaf. This was great. You know, I, I really love this section. You know, it, it shows you how easy it is to calibrate the instrument. We have a dedicated probe for that. It takes just a couple of minutes. And then how easy and simple it is to run the instrument, right? Uh, you know, it, it, it really spans... Uh, so many different applications. Uh, so we have these predefined templates, which are really great for the beginners, but as well for experts, right? They can modify their methods or build their own. So it really shows the ease of use of this instrument. So thank you all of this was great. And of course, thank you for the audience for tuning in, listening to this uh, interesting uh, and exciting, I, I hope, uh, aspect of the instrument. To learn more about the latest capabilities uh, of this instrument, you can visit us at the thermofisher.com slash Explorers 120 website. And again, thanks, and uh, we look forward hosting uh, you to the next uh, series on, uh, on, this, uh, on this instrument. So thank you.